The rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent rows that it has, or equivalently, the number of linearly independent columns. The rank of a matrix is always positive, except in the case of the zero matrix, which has rank zero. Let's go through five examples of calculating the rank of a matrix. We'll do the first four real quick, and we'll be a bit more thorough with the last one. Here's a matrix A. It's not the zero matrix, so its rank is positive. Generally, to find the rank of a matrix, we'll want to put it into row echelon form. Doing this to A gives us this matrix, and this tells us the number of linearly independent rows that A has. It's simply the number of non-zero rows in the row echelon form. In this case, we see that's 3, so the rank of A is equal to 3. Similarly, for this matrix B, if we put it into row echelon form, this is what we get. The number of linearly independent rows in B is the number of non-zero rows in the row echelon form. In this case, there are two non-zero rows, so the rank of B is two. Some matrices are simple enough that we don't need to put them in row echelon form. This matrix C is not the zero matrix, so it does have a positive rank, but I notice the two rows are not independent. The second row is simply equal to negative two times the first row, so C has only one independent row and its rank, which we could also so to note like this is equal to 1. This matrix D has fewer columns than it has rows, so it may be simpler to look at the columns. We notice the first two columns are linearly independent. There's no way to multiply column 1 to get column 2. However, column 3 is a linear combination of the first two columns. In fact, if we just add column 1 and column 2, that gives us column 3. So the matrix matrix D has only two linearly independent columns, and we would say that the rank of D is equal to two. If all else fails, we can always put the matrix into row echelon form and count the non-zero rows. Let's do one more example of that with this matrix E. We want to make the entries below each leading entry equal to zero. So below this two, we want only zeros. To get that, we'll set row two equal to row two minus row four so those ones will cancel out. To get rid of this one, we will subtract row two from row four to again cancel out the ones. That gets us here. We have zeros below the two like we want. Now we want to get zeros below the next leading entry of negative one. To make this two equal to zero, we'll add two copies of row two into this third row, and that gets us here. Now we also want to get rid of this one that's below the leading entry of negative one. And in order to do that, we'll simply add row two to row four, which will eliminate row four completely. So row four is all zeros, and we can see we are now in row echelon form, and there are three non-zero rows. Thus, the rank of E equals three. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.